Yes. And we're back. Welcome back to the Artists of Shitty People podcast. Artists of Shitty People. Like just every episode, you're gonna have to let them know you sing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How else will they know? Artists. Like, gotta let them know what I do. <laughs> How often do you wrestle with that when you meet someone? It's like that's in a position, got some like something going on. Like, how do I? How do I, how do I let them up? know like, that? <laughs> let without them know letting what them it know, is. right? Without I want having I to wanna see say thirsty. It, you know. <laughs> Besides, the how, shirt, do I I mean, <laughs> how do I make it known? How do I make it known? Okay, it's the makeup. So <laughs> we're back. Yay! Welcome back. Woo. If you're starting here, mm. this is episode eight. Mm. You want to go back to episode one. Need to go back. Back, back. Because they all build on each other. Yeah. It's like, it's like power. Mm. Game oh. of Thrones. Yeah. Like, you cannot start Game of Thrones in the You can't middle. just start That'd in the That'd be ridiculous. You got to go like back. The Red Wedding. Like, yeah. That's first no, episode. No. Like, Jesus. Oh, this is, this, this is interesting. Gruesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, don't do that. Go yeah. back. So you want to start episode one and it'll all make sense. Yeah. You'll get so much more value. So much more. Yeah. Especially if you're an artist. You need the tidbits that come with these shows. And, you know, you're probably like me and <laughs> don't know half the stuff we're talking about, but you get it as we A go. work in progress. It's a work in progress. You're evolving. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's... And I feel it, too. Like yeah. I, I feel it. I see it. I even feel better in myself because I'm more honest with myself and yeah. about the things I got going on. So, you know, I'm not afraid to admit that I, wait, you gotta go back to like episode four about this budgeting thing. But I'm not afraid to be like, you know, guys, I'm broke right now, so I can't do that. So, right. you know, it feels lighter. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's honesty is refreshing. Yeah. And it's like, like, and that goes back to that episode is when you feel like you can't be, everybody's telling you what you have to be. So mm-hmm. you feel like you have to put, well, then that's what I gotta be in, even if I'm not that, like. Like, artists, like, even in their art, a lot of times they're living a lie because they're not talking about the things that they really want to mm-hmm. talk about or they feel like they have to be this character or present this, like, because that's the only way people will accept me. Yeah. And so it's like that for them, and then you get to doing the same thing with yourself. Yeah. So you you, you just start lying to everybody, and then it's like, living and that's where the, the depression comes. Denial. Yeah. Because... It's a real thing, living in denial. I was talking to my therapist the other day, Mm. and we were diving into a lot of the situations that I had going on with music right now because I... Uh, that that song, mm-hmm. NIA, mm-hmm. is in Atlanta, um, that was the first time, I don't know if you heard the story yet, but I didn't get the song. I mm-hmm. wasn't able to sing the song because um, it just I wasn't well experienced to sing that song and let the story tell it how it needed to be told. So somebody else had to sing that song, mm-hmm. even though it was my experience from you know the storytelling standpoint. And for me, I felt crushed because mm-hmm. I had never been told you can't sing that song before. Mm-hmm. So I had to... Sit with it for a while, be uncomfortable in the fact that I'm being told, no, you can't do something, but not here. No, you can't do it because you suck, but no, you can't do it because you're just not there yet, you know? Right. And then grow from that. So I had to talk to my therapist about that because I was like, you know, it could have crushed me. But I sat in that discomfort for that moment and then had a talk with Jeremiah and he, you know, talked to me and talked me down the ledge. <laughs> and... <laughs> And then, you know, I was able to be like, okay, I'm okay with this. You know, I can keep going. You've been to the music review. Yeah. Yeah. I am direct. Yes. Like, very direct. Yeah. And it's like, not me, like, but it's like, we often, we're nice mm-hmm. because that's the way society functions. And I think it's really Western culture. Mm. In other cultures, oh, Eastern yeah. cultures, they're very... Stern and strict. And it's not even, they're just real. Like, yeah. like so you ask someone, like, how's your day? Terrible. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, you ask and this is what it right. is. In, in America... <laughs> You should it never. It's great. always great, fine, good, <laughs> I'm like, good. like, cause we yeah. don't care. Yeah, it's just a pleasantry. We really don't care, which yeah. makes us worse. Mm. <laughs> it's like they're rude because they're honest, right? And we're we're worse because true. we're 
we're liars. And we, I'm so fake that I demand that you be fake too. Yeah. Wow. Like you've had people like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Like, like you don't even talk like that. No. You understand? Like no. people's fakeness will rub off on you. I've I've never <laughs> sat and thought about it like that. But that is true because going overseas, even in like Dubai, it was not yeah. as pleasant. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like it's it's fake. Yeah. It's pleasant. Like and and that's like was having a conversation with an artist earlier is this image, this idealized image of America, of the world, of the way life should be. Mm-hmm. Um it's white picket fence. Yeah, it it American dream. Erasure. Of the erasure mm. of work, of sacrifice, of the like everything, like you too can make passive income. Like yes. we joking, like like you should just be able to have stuff, and you shouldn't have to work, work for, for it. it. Like why would you? What? Like those lames. Right. Like, Nine to fives. Like, <laughs> so and that's yeah. kind of the idea. So to the point where we like is like someone riding on the back of a truck. Like doing uh, picking up garbage and mm. stuff like that. It's like, yo, this person is sacrificing to feed their family and stuff. I'm like, why is that sacrificing? It's that person a, is living. Right. They live. They They're have a job. doing. They have a job. Like that ain't a sacrifice. Like it's it's mm. like that's necessary. He's doing that so that he doesn't have to go hunt. Yeah. And well, and grow his own food. Yeah. And build his own shelter. Like so, I'd rather do that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I guess there's that belief that you should do what you love. Yeah. All the time. And if you love to do it, then you can make money from it, and that's the good life, you know? Yeah. Which is a, what a lot of us strive for. Yeah. Hence why some of us artists are even doing music and making it a career and going through the sacrifice right now, because one day down the line, you know, want to make it lucrative. I think that's unhealthy. Why? If Do you think that you should... Have a universal basic. You should have a certain standard of living just because you're cute. Just because I'm pretty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> women yes. think like that. There are women yes. who think like that. I look good. I shouldn't you have sh- to. Yeah. Touch certain things. Does and that make sense? Do certain jobs. Does that really make sense? Like my, I have. You shouldn't have rent. I it sh- should just be taken care of. Because look at me. Like, <laughs> like, like. <laughs> I mean, being quite honest, like when yeah. you when you put it like that, yeah. it's like it's like that's that's not practical. Yeah, for everybody. Like, yeah. think about that. So every every female who's pretty then should just should just get a condo in Atlantic Station and a C class Benz. Like the government should just a- issue those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> like, it would like, be nice. Like, hey, all right. <laughs> it sounds it it sounds cool, but we know that that's not realistic. We know that that's not possible. Right. It it's doesn't not, work. It's not possible. Because but that's but just because you're pretty idea. doesn't mean you know you're even worth that. To so, be quite honest. But here's the thing. So why when you're talented? When you're ta- oh. Okay, so that's that's the the twofold side to it. Yeah, you're just like when you're pretty, you could be a shitty person. I mean, yeah. Okay, I just shitty people. All right, but yeah, if you were you're pretty, not necessarily mean you have a good personality or good character towards people or even integrity. So that doesn't mean you deserve those things off rip. Just like if you're an artist and you have talent, that doesn't mean you work hard enough for it or you strive or you you know sacrifice for it. So you ain't gonna get those things. Yeah, so, so it's pretty privilege. Yeah. Pretty right, privilege. pretty privilege. That don't mean that a person that person doesn't still have to show up. Yeah, and it's like so. Like when we had the conversation, pretty privilege, and it's like okay, true, but that person still has to work out. That still person Hell has yeah. to still. Well, then you go to the beauty shop for two hours, and then you do all the like. It's still, it's still sacrifices, work. right? And other, it's still even work. work to do that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not <laughs> always so, fun. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and so like, and so like, that's the thing. Like, it could be dangerous half the time too. And, and, but but in 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 that is like just the idea that because I have a quality or characteristic that I deserve a thing. Mm. That's that's problematic. Yeah, that's false. That's that's flaw. You don't deserve anything just from being born. I wouldn't even you know wouldn't even say that. You got to work for everything. Right, and Hence so th- that's world. where. But that's where I say when it comes to the 
where it's unhealthy to think like because I like doing something and I deserve to make money doing it. Yeah. And so and and when you think about when you when that's the model and that's yeah. the way that the world works in your head, then that's going to lead to some some issues and some challenges be, when it has to reconcile with the reality of the way that the actual world you live in works. Right. And so that's where like for me I com- I'm concerned with um a lot of artists developing um, anxiety and depression Mm. surrounding their art. So, and I I always, like, just for me, especially, like, in the black community, like, with um, less access to uh, mental health care and the stigma of even seeking out that in our community. Say that. And then you look at art as it's a form of expression and it's a creative release and it's a way to actually, it, it, in Express a way. Express myself in therape- therapeutic. It's therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so now we take that thing that should be a alleviator of the stresses and the things that you deal with as a person of color in America. Mm. And then we say, but. If you ain't making money doing it, <laughs> and then just throw a whole nother layer of anxiety yeah. and 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 things that you have to wrestle with and think about, and like yo, just bro, just write your little rap and record it and put it up on SoundCloud and share it with your friends and yeah. and just enjoy it and have fun. You don't have to be you don't you don't need to be coming up with a budget. Some people don't even need to be coming up with a budget. Because those are the hobbyists that you be talking about. Yes. And, and they can use it as that, and they can use it as a therapy, but it's still not therapy. I'm no, it's not, there. but it's, it's not that's therapy. why I say it's therapeutic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, And so it's like, here, here's the thing is, why I say that is, because sometimes it, it forces you to relive or to reprocess mm-hmm. the way that you see things, the way that you experience things and things that have gone on in your life and even just thinking about it to write about it is like even one of the things where like I learned a lot about the music industry because I talk. Yeah. So anything that I read, I had to read it enough to repeat it and break it down. And when someone asks a question, figure out a way, how can I explain this to them in terms that they understand? Mm -hmm. So like I did that all through from the time I was like 18. Like I've been doing this forever. So um, every artist, every producer, every like I would read the manuals, I would read the software and teach them how to use the software. So I would have to learn these different things Mm. and then turn around and teach it. Wow. So like when when as an artist and as a creative, when you take trauma, when you take these life experiences, like I feel like there's a benefit in revisiting them on your own terms. And having to reprocess when you telling the story, when you like, even when you change little stuff, you're like, yeah, I was probably a little tripping on mm-hmm. that, because <laughs> like, mm-hmm. now you gotta, I ain't gonna put that in there. Right, that was, right. I was on some fuck shit. Because now I look bad. <laughs> I ain't gonna write that like that. But I'm gonna switch. So, it. but right. now that's it's mm-hmm. in your head that. You really was on. Some you probably owe somebody right. apology. Right, right. It was probably your fault. Yeah. So it's like, like you know, but still coping with that though. You know, because when you do go through those situations, and I was having a conversation with a friend the other day. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a rapper, and he um. I told him about therapy. I asked, "Would you ever go to therapy?" He said, "Nah, I don't think I need therapy. You know, therapy men don't men not supposed to show their emotions and all that stereotypical stuff." Yeah. And um. My son, my son be running around like that. What? I'm like, man. Where do we? Where did I get this from, though? Because like, you wouldn't teach him that. No, I don't. I don't understand. I mean, I get this one rapper friend. You mm-hmm. know, he didn't grow up with a father, so yeah. you may have missed that lesson. And you know, however, whoever your role model was probably told you that men ain't supposed to have those emotions. But like, people don't realize that when you don't even really know how to cope with those things, it just stays bottled up in you, and then you're. Projecting it onto other people little by little. Yeah. Like, it's just... So, that's why music, to me, is one way therapeutic. You know, you can revisit things and and, and reevaluate it. But how do you let it go? Right. That's my thing. So, go to therapy. Yeah. I tell everybody go to therapy. Are you in therapy? Mm-mm. Have you ever done it? Mm-mm. Ever wanted to? Oh. Uh. 
Not really. Like I, I, I feel very fine and well adjusted. I, <laughs> like, well, see, that's the thing. I've always like, like, studied mm-hmm. like things like so, and I've like, I don't know, just my my viewpoint on life. I kind of accept the world for what it is. Because you're like, mindful. Yeah, I'm yeah. mindful of things. Like, so it's like, so I don't have issues with people. Like, I don't have like. It's like, I don't know. It's just I I'm I'm a I'm a weird person. You communicate well and I I'm thoughtful. Like mm-hmm. I think about like I think about things from other people's point of views. Like conscious I'm of just how like, you yeah. come off and things like that. And I'm not, not always conscious of how like and and I'm conscious of the fact that I'm not, not always, always conscious. conscious of, <laughs> right, conscious of the fact that I'm not always conscious. because yeah. like I like um it took me I had to learn like yo I'm an asshole. Because I love people, and so in 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 this and here's how this works for me: friendship is the most selfish thing. Friendship is selfish. Do explain, right? Because are you friends with anyone you don't like? No. You're only friends with people who bring you benefit, whether they're funny. They're nice to be around. They're good looking. They have access to things. They like you're friends w- to people who benefit you. Yeah. You, but there are people who would benefit from your friendship and from being around you that you're not friends with. So, in order to maintain the friendship, we are nice to each other. Right. Even when we're not good to each other. So, there, and we use music as an example. Someone hears your record, they don't like the record. They don't tell you that's not a good record. They're like, oh, it's cool. It's yeah, right. fake. Because they don't <laughs> want to hurt your feelings. Right. Not because of your feelings. Because of? How hurting your feelings will impact the relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, we're supposed to be going out of town this weekend, or we're supposed to do this, and I don't want you to be mad at me, or I don't want to feel like you don't like so me. So you don't or- think that's passivity? I feel like that is selfishness because I'm telling you something based on what I want. Mm, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like where I'm I'm going to tell you what I feel like you need to hear so that we can still go do that thing. No, no, cuz I'm I'm willing to lose you as a friend to tell you what you need to hear. Uh-huh. Like and that's the problem oh, like you, we have. You, yeah. Okay, yeah, you. Like we won't check each other. Like often people won't check like, "Yo, why are you hanging out, bro? You about to get I ain't you. You can't come around here with that. Then, mm. like, we won't do that. We like, all right, we we'll let stuff slide because I'm gonna need a ride to work tomorrow. Like, <laughs> like, so you a cosign? Like, you got a friend who be on some, and you cosign? You a cosign all the bullshit? Like, oh yeah, you right? Like, or like, oh yeah, you right, dog? Like, no, and like, yo, you you, you probably should apologize. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think going. You back don't want to deal with an uncomfortable conversation with them half of the time. Yeah. Yes. That's for your benefit. Yes. But as of lately, I've been sitting in a lot of uncomfortable positions and I'm finding it to be more beneficial to have those uncomfortable conversations versus not having those uncomfortable conversations. I feel like I've contributed to it. You absolutely (laughs) have. Absolutely have. You, Jeremiah, a lot of people that I've been around lately, just on this this really, I just call it my uncomfortable phase. I'm sitting in a lot of uncomfort Mm. and I'm like, okay, just get comfortable here because somehow... For some reason, I have to be here, and it's helping me grow, so it's cool. Sucks sometimes, half the time, most of the times, but at the other side, I see the benefit, and I'm like, I'm a better person because of that. So, so yes, I see what you're saying when it comes down to not telling people, but I think that also, and that has also, therapy has something to, to right. do with that because I'm learning to be more mindful, being honest, came up out of that denial, and I'm learning to look at ugly things and be like, this can still be beautiful, you know? Right. So I think everybody should go to therapy. Right. I said that to say everybody should go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> the EP, the de- de-shittification of Primrose. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. But, and, but that's the, when it's I not too bad. when I say the, the whole thing with, um, like, how friendship is selfish mm. um, is because I'm going to interface with the world or with people 
in a way that may not be honest and may not be for their best. Like, if I want you to really be successful with your music and I care about you, I'm like, hey, that's not the record to push. Mm -hmm. Like, don't spend $15,000, $1,500 shooting a video for that one. That ain't it. But I'm more concerned with us having an uncomfortable conversation than you spending this money Mm -hmm. that you won't be able to get back and possibly not having the budget when you actually do have the record. Right. So my feelings come before your dreams. Mm. That's selfish. Which is horrible. Yeah. But we don't think about it like that. And so in in <clears throat> in that sense, like that's where I had to realize like like people like what you put out there isn't always what other people receive. Like some people like like would think I remember when I got older like running into people, like, oh, you were so you were so arrogant in high school. I was like, what? <laughs> like, wow. Like, you should have talked to me. Right, right. <laughs> like, I, right. I was I was fucking writing code in my little <laughs> book and stuff. Like, right, like, like, myself. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> but because we we have <clears throat> expectations mm-hmm. for other people to interface the way that we interface. Mm-hmm. So if I sit up and I'm being honest with you, that's my love language, honesty. Like, hey, that's not it. This is what we need to do. You shouldn't do that like that. Like, because I want you to win. But if your love language is lies, mm-hmm. like, is like, why would you say that to me when all I wanted to hear was, was this is great. Right. <laughs> a lie. <laughs> Feed me lies. Like, you don't care if it's a lie. I just wanted to hear what I wanted to hear. And there are a lot of people like that. Yeah. That's the crazy truth. A lot of people are like that. And it sucks. I think we all are. I think I'm like that. They live in the land of denial. Well, like, who doesn't want to hear what they want to hear? It's what you want to hear. Yeah, you want to hear what you want to hear, but it doesn't help you. No, but it's, all the time. it's what like, you want to hear. Like, how, how can red not be red? What you want to hear is what you want to hear. That's the only thing it can be. No, I mean, we were taught red was red. I'm saying, like, if a lie, if there's something that's not true. But hold on, no, no. What you want to hear. Yeah. Like, just think about that. Whatever it is that you want to hear, Mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. Right. What you want to hear. The problem is when we're not accepting of hearing things that we didn't want to hear. Like, people, people, when people complain about people always want stuff for free. Mm-hmm. Like, I used to be like that, and I was like, "Who don't like free shit though?" Right. Who don't like, free shit? <laughs> like, so I don't mind you, hey, trying to like, nah, like I, like I have to be. It's on me to be uncomfortable to say no. It's this much mm. because this is my product. This is my business. This is my thing. So that's yo, know, that's my, oh my God. That happened to me yesterday. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! <laughs> wow, you just said that. I'm like, damn, it happened to me yesterday. <laughs> We're not always comfortable saying no. Right. And so, but that's the onus is on us. So we can't get mad at people for wanting what they want and that making us uncomfortable. uncomfortable. We got to get comfortable saying no, no or saying our price and stop. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we can see what we can work out. Mm-hmm. And like, no, like, wow. We have to be honest. And so that's the difference in our culture. Over here, it's, oh, good. How are you doing? Like, versus terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Now you feel uncomfortable. You don't know what right, to follow like, up with yeah. that. Like, all right. I hope it gets better. Like, okay. Yeah. Wow. And so, like, that's like being honest is considered rude. And that's crazy. But no, I, I, I get it. This is the culture that we've grown up in and to adapt. But how rude is it to ask someone a question that you don't even care about the answer to? So if I say, if you come in and say, how you doing? I'm like, man, I just had this and I, and I start going and telling you. And like, oh, I'm like, hey, nah, nah. thank God. <laughs> That's not what I signed up for. That is not for. what I was trying to hear. I just wanted you to say good and keep it pushing. Yeah, right? it was like, That's what I wanted to hear. Right. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> So you Man. wanted to lie. Right. I did. I wanted to hear what I wanted to hear. I get you. <laughs> I be wanting to lie too. Man. Yeah. I, I don't lie. like that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> Just keep it moving. And, and so, and that's where we come to like when we have these uncomfortable conversations, like even with the with the the situation with the record you was talking about. Is like you want to hear that this, you want things to work mm-hmm. out like this. And it doesn't. Yep. 
it's like so many, so many things that I've done and things that we've poured money into, resources into, effort into, to making, and it just didn't happen. It just didn't work the way that I wanted it to work. Mm-hmm. And it's like having to accept that. Like it's like, um, and I, I, I honestly, um, I was taught this. I learned this from artists. Like. When I stopped doing music myself and focused on doing the stuff, like was doing more consultant work and doing stuff and helping all these artists and people get in situations and all this stuff and then just watch them fumble the bag over and over and not show up and not do this and not. Mm. And it's like, yo, people are going to let you down. Mm. Like, that's just like, that's just what people do. It was like everyone, especially in this space, is like everybody says they want it. And it's like, and this is like, like I said, like the the question that that separates the men from the boys. Like, like I'm trying to learn the business. I'm trying to do this. And it was like, well, I just need, and that's, and I, all this. And I'm like, okay. What's the last book you read about the music industry? And when I ask that and they can't answer that, or I ask something that's very simple that shows, well, have you done the first step? Yeah. Then you're just talking. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it bad enough. <laughs> you don't want it. <laughs> like it's like it's like you would like it. Yeah. It looks glamorous. It, it looks nice. Yeah. 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 Like who wouldn't like it? Yeah. I, I like for people to scream my name and to have lots of money and to be <laughs> like <laughs> all the outside stuff. Uh, yeah. Like all how the it outside looks. stuff. Right. Like yo. So it's like like that's that's the thing like and so with with having these situations like for instance like I said with the the situation with the record it's you want to hear you want things to work out in a certain way yeah and there's nothing wrong with that it's about how do you handle when it doesn't, doesn't. Mm. yeah that's it like man, this goes to the conversation I was having earlier. It's like one of our, one of our um, subscribers on the site has music played on the music review. Love the records. Like I think this guy's super dope. He makes good music. Like I'm going crazy on like you know I like if I like it I'm gonna turn up. Yeah. I don't sit. I don't. I ain't, I ain't trying to be cool. Like right. I'm just I'm having fun. You so you. if I don't yeah. like it. I'm gonna tell you if I do, you gonna tell. You gonna know. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna be able to tell. Yeah. So it's like, um, so it's like his management like emailed and was like, because someone got selected, it was like the tenth person who got selected for our sound stage, mm-hmm. and so the manager like emails like. How such and such ain't get picked for this. This is some fugazi y'all overlooking and da 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 da. All the emotional responses that artists mm, give. Yeah. Um, but this is the manager, and so, um, and and this has happened many a times, managers and artists. And um, I get it forwarded over to me and um, read it, and I'm like, okay. I was like, all right, I'm gonna make sure I get on the phone with them. Like, so um, contact the artist and it's like, yo, need to get on a call with you and your manager. Like, make sure you and your manager give me a call and we Same set it up. Right. Like, so I set up and I talked to him and I'm explaining, I'm like, yo, and I read the email. I'm like, what makes it so bad? This lets me know that you, you, you got all this energy and all this like aggression or mm-hmm. this little spiciness to this email. You ain't even been reading the emails and reading the stuff. Because then you would know that we have five more people to pick. Yeah. Why would we pick you after this email? And it's like, why would we pick you to do... And it's like, you have music good enough to be picked. I don't know if you're going to like... And that's why I separate myself from the people who make the decision on stuff. Because yeah. people be doing a lot of stuff like, if I had to pick it. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's like... The thing that I have to realize, and I'm explaining to them, is like, if I'm working with a promoter and we got, okay, we're going to have someone open for Dirk. I'm not going to pick you, and this is how you handle business. Right. Because 
this is like the test of your character is how thing how you handle things when they don't go your way. Mm-hmm. And so I watch this all the time. People submit for stuff on our site and do things, and they be all spicy in the comments, spicy in the emails, spicy all the time on all these different things. And it's like, and that's why you're not where you want to be. That's why you're unhappy. It's like, it's like, throughout all this, like, the thing is, you are afforded an opportunity. Whether or not you secure the opportunity, you are afforded an opportunity. Like, if today you woke up and you had an opportunity to open up for Little Dirk, whether or not you got to open for Little Dirk, you woke up with an opportunity mm-hmm. that was not on the table for you mm-hmm. any other way. Mm-hmm. And so no no reverence, no respect or appreciation for the opportunities unless everything follows Goes in th- your way. Exactly. Yeah. And so then what that causes is less opportunities to come your way. So if I have a, a show for you, a plug for you, and – because it don't go your way or some now you got an attitude and you don't like the amount of people who have been like amazing artists that popped up on my radar they may have been they got on the site to submit to open up for this festival and I always listen to the top people that we send over to the promoters so the top 10 15 people go through like oh who is this and go and check them out and like yo I'm in love with the music yeah and then ultimately it was someone better or someone that the promoter liked more that mm-hmm. felt was a better fit for this show and that's who gets picked and then this person is like we send out the email blast and post it up and people be spicy in the comments on it or that person go unsubscribe and cancel their membership and all these little things and I was like yo someone who like and then it'd be another thing that happens and I was like yo where is that person at like how come they didn't submit for this oh they're not even on the platform anymore, anymore. I was like, because they got upset from that one last other thing, and so now they gonna miss everything else moving forward. Because just couldn't <laughs> hold that character well, and have true, great integrity. Honestly, to, I, I don't, I don't even know. It's just like the ability to digest outcomes that aren't your desired Tough outcomes. situations. Yeah. yeah, it's like, and it's like, it's it's hard. But yeah. that's but, where the true challenge is. But it, here's the thing. I think it's hard because we have this, like like I said, the difference, cultural differences. Mm-hmm. Like, because we have this reflexive fakeness. Everything's supposed to be in good. Western, yeah, hey, everything's hot. <laughs> everything's you, great. Like, because that's what you're supposed to post on Instagram. Everything's always working out for me. Every right. day, like, that's, what, that's the, the only thing. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, so when something bad happens yeah. and you're only surrounded with everybody, and so when someone asks you about it, you can't be like, oh, I didn't get it. Like, it got to nope. be. You got to have made it. You got to have gotten yeah. the yes. You're going to the stage, the yeah. big stage. You know, you're going to Hollywood. That's yeah. what everybody wants to hear. Nobody wants to hear this. It's like, and, yeah. that's, it, and it's hard. So how do, you, how do you deal with that? How do you cope with that thing? You got to sit in that uncomfortable place. How was it for you in that uncomfortable? Like, okay, so so you have the the NIA song, yeah, and so and I sat there and um, I sang it the best of my ability that I could. Mm. Did not work out. When I came out of the booth, they said, "All right, yeah, this just ain't working out. This ain't your song. We're gonna have somebody else do it because you know it's a great concept. You have to surrender to the song." In that moment, I was like, "Okay, I need to go," you know, and right. I left for the night. Um, slept, woke up the next morning, and then text Jay and was like, hey, let me talk to you about this because I don't want it to fester up and become something that it, it doesn't need to be. And so we had that conversation. Hold on, wait, wait. Jeremiah. Therapy. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Therapy. <laughs> like, therapy allows you to, like, hey, hey, hey. let me sleep on it. Let me yeah. get it. Like, I don't want this to fester. Yeah, don't let it. Yeah, absolutely Yeah, yeah. good, good. Yeah. All right, so? So um, we talked about it, had a great conversation, um, and I let it go from that conversation because we were able to talk through it. Then the next session, I came in. The girl was there. She sang the song 10 times better than I did. I couldn't yeah. even flex on it. Because right. I was like, damn, she sounds good, you know? Yeah. But um, she sang it. When I heard the final cut, I was just like, okay. You know, I right. have work to do. Right. And that just made me say I have to do better so that I 
the lies. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to do better so that I can be better right. and, and never get another no to a song that I really like. Cause that was, you know, that was my story right. that it came from. And so initially I was like, this is my song. Right. But then he was like, you know, at least you're a writer on it. And if it sells, you get some royalties or whatever. I was like, okay, but that's not how I saw it because I don't see myself as a writer first. I see myself as an artist first. Right. I never thought about the writer side. But had to just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> had to let it go. Like, and that, like, the lies. Yeah. Like, it's like, so if someone doesn't tell you, then how do you improve? How do you get better? And it's like, I remember um, my first studio that I had, and it was a young lady. That was, uh, someone brought to the studio. No, my barber, D, he had someone. Because I needed someone to sing a hook. Mm-hmm. And, like, she came in the studio, and she could sing. And then she was in there singing, and she couldn't sing that well. Like, she wasn't a singer. You know how someone can sing, but they don't sing? Yeah. They don't have any training. They don't right, do right, this right. often, but they have a voice. Mm-hmm. Let me say that. They had, she had a voice, yeah. but she could not sing. Okay. And so, but she was cute. So everybody was in there trying to work with her. I remember the producer like, hey, no, hit this note right here. Like, like giving her so much coaching and yeah. attention and effort. to Because we, we want this to work we for you, to baby. We want you, right? <laughs> We wanted to work for you because you look good. Nobody wanted to yeah. just be like, yo, this ain't it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yo, you can take her back wherever she came from. Right. And see, I appreciate those friends because they was very much so like, yeah, this ain't working for you. You yeah. know, that we didn't sit there for hours trying to get through it. No, 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 no. When I couldn't get through that waste first. Waste time. Right. And they wasn't trying to do that. Nobody's trying to do that. We were no. not trying to waste time, especially with the goal that they had to get to Grammy this weekend. It was like, got to get this done, got to get that done. Yeah. So once I got in there and couldn't do it, it was like, try this, try this. Yeah. Come out. You know? Right. <laughs> and then I just came out. We They sat me down. And it was like, it was like... Yeah, so this isn't your song, right? You know, that's exactly how <laughs> they're like, well, <laughs> that's exactly like how when you know someone's was. mannerisms right, right. and everything. <laughs> and it's like the AI in my head right. just rendered a 3D <laughs> image. I can hear the reverb yeah, off the walls like, and yeah, everything. It. it was so it was an immersive experience. And the more he's just sitting there like. <laughs> Okay. I know how I'm gonna take it. And X is just in the corner, quiet. Yo. They just staring me dead in my face to see if you know Hilarious. if I'm gonna cry or anything. And you know, I just I was smiling, but I wasn't I mean, really smiling. Man, <laughs> you like, know, I was just like, okay. And he's and then Jeremiah, Jeremiah, this classic. What are your thoughts on you know? <laughs> And I'm like, because you're my thoughts. And then we had the camera guy in there recording the whole time because, you know, they got the whole finishers thing going on where they're doing right, the content right, right, right now. Yeah. So the camera guy's in there. And I'm like, you want my thoughts? Like, <laughs> you don't want my thoughts right now. So I say, you know Turn what? Turn that fucking right. camera off. <laughs> <laughs> like those reality TV shows, like, get back oh, out my face, man. you know? <laughs> But uh, I just had to be like, you know, I'm just going to go home. <laughs> and Jeremiah wanted me to sit in there. He's like, no, I think you should stay, you know, and 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 get get this experience. It would have been beneficial for you to It stay. would have been. But I had a dance rehearsal that night, and people were already waiting on me. Right. So X was like, I think you should go. That's, that's bull. No, it's no, serious. No, 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 it's bull. What's because bull? Because guess what? If it was your song, you would have had time to be there to record it, right? No. What? No. What? Because mm. we had a set time. What was you doing recording then? We had a set. We had a set time. It but started it was, late? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I'll give you that. We All had right. a set time. They started late, and I already had everybody coming for a dance rehearsal at this time. So okay. I knew that I had to leave it Is this it for time. Is it the 10th? Um, no, this was a show we already had. Okay. Um, we had that show, yeah, like oh, last so week. <laughs> So many shows. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was, that was, no, that, that was, was for last my week. European <laughs> leg of the tour. <laughs> right. So, oh man. Yeah, that's past. But <laughs> so. Um, but so, no, no, I got so that yeah. and that's but that's the like when I say we want to hear what we want to hear. Yeah. And it's that desire that it 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 makes it difficult. For people to be honest, mm-hmm. and so like I know I like I j- jokingly like oh, I miss out on tons of money. I've like done like I rub ton of people the, the wrong, wrong way. way 
because I actually care. Mm. Like, so, tell the truth. you know how I many people have been in the live and, like, then come, fuck you, it's live and da-da-da-da-da. Like, they just say, that's bullshit-ass magazine. And it's like, yo, they be all over Instagram and our inbox and all that stuff. Because I said, yo, this isn't a good record. Like, and you know, I'm never nasty. I don't clown people. Yeah. I don't do jokes at people's expenses. But, but I am going to be honest. <laughs> Don't and tell it's that like, truth, though. <laughs> and, and when you've gone so long without honesty, mm. then it's like it makes it even more like damaging yeah. because you have a false image. Like if you're in your circle, if you keep going in rooms and being around people where you're the smartest person in the mm-hmm. room. Everybody's a yes man. And then like when you when you run into some people who are really smart, mm-hmm. and it's and like, like it destroys no. your self image. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like Yes, I I'm I am very technically savvy, mm-hmm. and I'm like and I, I'm I I know a lot about a lot of different things, but when I get around someone who's a specialist, <laughs> like all right, like I know I can you can communicate with me, but like I would never done that. I didn't even know that did that. How you do that? <laughs> it's like all right, yeah. <laughs> like I like and it, and it's being able to. To, to do that and acknowledge, but it's like when you're surrounded by this and it, it props up the facade that you've built for the world mm. and then you have reinforcement from other people who are lying to you. And I was like, and I'm like, yo, and, and I'll say this, you're not the best singer. Like I was talking to, just left. I'm like, you're not the best artist, you're not the best producer, you're not the best engineer. And I'm like, and I'm like, each one dagger, 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 mm-hmm. dagger. And it's like, and it's like, Cause no one talks like that, but you can't say that everything I'm saying isn't it's a not, fact. Yeah, <laughs> because best is only one person, right? And, and you got your mind right? if you think that. <laughs> that <ain't true. laughs> I don't care how good you are. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like and that changes on the day to day. Like you saying, Bo could be the fastest person to, on the planet, right? Today, today, <laughs> <laughs> and then tomorrow. Like if he tired, he ain't ate, didn't get a good night's rest. It's somebody else. Somebody else tomorrow. <laughs> Truth. So it's like those are the the things is understanding how how mm-hmm. things fluctuate in in those truths yeah. and and those are, that's an unsettling truth. But you be just like yo, I'm so good, and you and you are good. You're better than so many people. It's like 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 the way that people talk about people in the NBA or any professional sports. Mm-hmm. I'm like yo. He will dust your ass yeah. if, if y'all played one on one. Like, let's like, don't ever get it confused. He may be the worst at the highest level. level right? <laughs> the worst at the highest level. So, would you rather be the worst at the highest level or the best at the lowest level? And there's a lot of middle levels yeah. in between that. There's a lot of mids in there. And so, like, and that's where, like, as independents, like, and you you know this term, and you've heard this term. You're like, yo, best in my city. <laughs> it's like, what? It's, you're from Spokane. Right. Like, Where what? is that? What? Right. what city are we talking what? about? How many rap? Like, and Reverb Nation is the worst. Of them. Oh, like, you're the yeah. number one artist in zip code yeah. 30304. Like, like, Where is how many, that? How many artists are, are there, there in, in the zip code? Right. <laughs> All of two. Right. It's like, ah, oh, man. Right. <laughs> So it's like those type of things. Like if you mm. if you segment anything well enough, you can always be number one. Yeah. Hmm. Like you're the number one R and B artist of Caribbean descent that is currently recording with a Grammy Award engineer that also is a podcast host. Yeah. You're number one I in that category. One. <laughs> wow, look at like, me. Like we just segment. And yeah. it's it's the trophies. Now it's, that makes me feel good. And it's like, but, <laughs> but that's but like think about all the stats that come out online. Mm-hmm. The first female artist to do this on a this without a collaboration right. released on a major label on a Friday. You gotta make like, it very specific. You gotta like, add all yo, these. Just and that's to, not to take away from. The, the fact that you accomplish something is good, but it's like because we got to be number one. Mm-hmm. We can't just be happy with the – we got to create – it has to be the first black-owned car wash slash rib <laughs> shack in all of San Jose County. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
position. Yeah. Like it's all like, and so we create these hmm. narratives. So now in your head, it's like number one, but not really. Not really. Like you've segmented, like I'm the best singer in my city that does this street, like, mm-hmm. like, like whatever it does to give you a number one to make you feel good. But then when you have to put what you do against all the people who that do, do it, it mm. then, and, and yeah, so then, number one no more. Right. It's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. My mom says I'm the most handsome boy in the third grade. <laughs> <laughs> At your school. Oh, at your school, right. <laughs> in your class. In your class. At your height. Yeah. Right. Like, you got to. So it's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, those are those are the issues, um, I feel like, it when it comes to, like, the growth and development, this, the desire to hear what you want to hear mm. is there. and But having to acknowledge that, yo, this is what I want to hear is not necessarily what's true. Yeah. And so understanding that this isn't necessarily true, this is what I aim for and what mm-hmm. my goal is, then I have to be open to the feedback that the world gives me yeah. that contradicts what, what I, I want to hear and yeah. believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes you better. So, you know, once you can accept that, I'm yeah. learning that right now. Yeah. So, I want you to say it makes you better as a person. Makes you better as a person? <laughs> yeah. Because you always, yo, it makes you better sounds like, that's what makes me better. Oh. <laughs> I am better than all of you. Right? I'm better. Like, I'm better. And, you know, you know, better someone such as myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it makes me better as a person to, so, to accept these things. But so being able to accept what you don't want to hear. Yeah. And and use that as a learning curve, mm-hmm. really. Versus it's experience. Yeah. And then and, and, and um Inspiration. Inspiration. Right? Yeah. And so, so everything resolved itself. And it was like, do you feel from that very uncomfortable situation, from that devastating loss? Devastating. Devastating. It was devastating. I know it was. I even went in the bathroom and cried yeah. and then came back out and had to face Jeremiah again. Yeah, it was devastating. Yeah. Yeah. And act like you hadn't cried. And act like I hadn't <laughs> cried. But he knew I cried. He was like, I know you're not okay, right? Right, you're quiet. Right, right. (laughs) Let's talk about the quiet cries. In the bathroom of Atlanta South. This is, is, these are the real conversations. Like, don't like, like, like being upset. Like, listen, I remember, I remember as an artist, you know, the DJ, Give them your music, waiting on them to play your music, like on the regular. This at the skating rink, like, oh yeah, play my music. And it's like waiting on the DJ to play your music. It's like, ah, it ends at two. Okay, it's like 10 o'clock. All right, all right. Hey, what's good? We good? We good? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you queued up. 11, 11, 11. Okay, okay. And I'm like, yo, it's about to tip off. Yeah, right, right. right, right. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, you gonna put me on prime time? Right. <laughs> twelve, twelve o'clock, twelve thirty, one, one o'clock. o'clock. All right. People ooh, start leaving really? now. No, no, because it's two. Like we going to two, so ooh, they gonna, they gonna play me around one, one thirty. Oh, we lit. And then all of a sudden, it's like that R and B record come on, like and the cool down, down set. right? The slow down. I know I don't mix right. in. With the- <laughs> No, now I know. Yeah. Like, waiting all night for the DJ to play me. Man, that happened to me the other day. And then realizing, oh, the DJ played me. <laughs> right. He she sure did play me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got played. And I paid. I paid and got played. Oh, I didn't pay. I paid. But see, that I was still in my phase of mm. if I gotta pay, then it means I'm not good enough. Like, yeah. like all this stuff I talk about, it ain't conjecture. It's like, yo, I've been there, I've lived it, these experiences. And so it's like, yo, that 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 that's some heartbreaking, like, like, yeah, you got my CD. <laughs> You, you got it right. Like I, I gave it to you. Like, 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 cause like, <laughs> I ain't cry, but oh, I can feel the swelling that in the chin. Right? Like, like, that shaking. That's a little hard to swallow right now. 
said Cause it shake was his lit. throat. It was lit that night. What? Everybody there. Can't believe this motherfucker. Right. Can't believe this <laughs> motherfucker. Say you going to do it. Ain't do it. I ain't fucking with you when right. I get on. Oh, when I get on, nigga. When I get on. <laughs> Shit on you, nigga. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> man, it'd be the worst. <sighs> yeah, like is, but you have to go through these things. You have to experience these, and uh, then, and here's the because we condition, and that's why I go back to what we talked about last week with finding service providers. Mm-hmm. And we live in a fake society where people want to hear what they want to hear. So I got to tell you what you want to hear, hear, otherwise it it I risk losing the relationship. Mm-hmm. Because you don't care. Like, here's the thing. People do provide a service to artists. Mm-hmm. And y'all still want to email y'all fucking music. Yep. Why does it matter if I like your record if I provide a, a service? service. <laughs> people, I guess we want them to like it. We just like, want people to like our stuff. Right. But see, here's the thing. It's like, and then you'll say this. People do anything for a paycheck. They don't do anything. See, they'll say anything just to try to get the money up out of you. But then you force them in a position mm. to have to say anything to get to the get money. The, yeah. So it's like, oh, you do that? Oh, yeah, I got like, yeah, we got a $1,500 budget. That's what we're trying to do. But listen to our music first. Right. Listen to our music. You like it? You like it? Huh? You like our music? <laughs> like that. And they do not care. And that's and that's the thing. So now if they don't like it, mm-hmm. are they, is, there, is there any motivation or any reason impetus for them to tell you that they don't like it if you've made that the gate to getting paid and so that's what all artists do Um, so now everybody just lies to you yeah it just it just don't uh, don't make sense it doesn't it just but you want to hear what you want to hear yeah and people want to make money doing what they do for a living. Yeah. And the only way for them to do that it's is for them to tell, tell you what, what you, you want to hear. hear. <laughs> yeah. It's flawed out here. Yeah. It's just flawed. And so like that's where I was getting when I was talking last week when I was explaining, like, yo, it's like the artist set the tone mm. for how, like, how a lot of these people have to sell. Like, if you bought based on... Like, you didn't buy based on your feelings, then I wouldn't have to sell you based on your feelings. Yeah. And so, if I got to sell you based on your feelings, that means that I can't necessarily be honest with you. Yeah. If I can't say, I don't, want her to I don't like feelings. this record, I don't fuck with it. I'll send it out to, I'll send it out though. And it was like, oh, they didn't know. They fuck ain't with fucking my, with me. I yeah. Fucking, I ain't fucking with this. I ain't about to pay you. I ain't about to do no yeah. business with you because yeah. you don't like my music. Yeah. That now you lose the money, and that, that's what service providers do not want is to lose money. Yeah, and it's like nobody wants to. Nobody in business <laughs> yeah. wants to. Yeah, yeah. Like so, it's like if someone if someone hires you to write a song for somebody, and they're not a great singer, mm-hmm. are you gonna be like, nah, I really ain't feeling her voice? <laughs> like, are you gonna be like, cut right, the check, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, I got you. So it's cool when you do it. Right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so we get we get into that 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 space. Yeah. And so um it's it's for us to be able to be honest mm. with creatives. Um and for creatives when you don't penalize people for being honest with you. And it's like when people can tell you, hey, this when a producer feels comfortable telling you, hey, that ain't it, or we need to do this, or an engineer feels comfortable telling you when the people who are assisting you assisting you with the marketing mm-hmm. or these different things feel comfortable where they can be honest with you and it doesn't affect the relationship. And that's one of the things, like when someone's coachable. Mm-hmm. Like when it's like, hey, no, you want to pit your knees. Oh, I ain't it. Okay. Yeah. Or like I'm just need to bring them to just ah, yeah. there ain't enough in the ball else like it's me, everything me, yeah right. like, yeah, right. yeah I don't want to deal with you that's <laughs> at that point nobody want to deal with you yeah you're not starting <laughs> all right <laughs> bench rider yeah so and so like those are the 
those are the things. No, you know what? That's crazy because I actually had a really good talk with um, one of my friends mm. who's a dancer, who's one of my dancers yesterday. And um, we were talking about the payments that they get for performing with me because mm. that was a situation where um, – <sighs> As my recent, you know, recollection of um, my budget and being broke, um, I had to cut some of their payments mm -hmm. so that it could be more feasible for me to be able to do the shows that I had already lined up. And um, one of my dancers, she's much younger, mm -hmm. inexperienced, but she's amazing at what she does. She decided to have a conversation with the other, my friend, my, one of my other dancers, and she um, she told her, this will probably come out before <laughs> or after I have this conversation with her. So it's cool. Mm -hmm. But she was saying that um, she didn't want to dance anymore with me if I can if I couldn't pay her a certain amount of money. Right. And but she wouldn't have that conversation with me because, right. you know, uncomfortable. it's uncomfortable. Right. But because here's the thing. I don't want to fuck up the money that you will pay me. Right, right, <laughs> right. But she's like, but on on in her ear, the people yeah. that I brought her to that coaches her now to dance, how she's dancing, mm -hmm. they are talking to her about her value and knowing that if you don't get paid X amount of dollars, you shouldn't be doing no shows right. with it, you know, blah, 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 blah. But above that, which is what me and my friend we um was talking about we said above that though are those relationships that you had because in in reality she wouldn't have those people talking to her and coaching her if mm -hmm. she didn't make them through me you know right. and through the situations that I put her in but it's just having those conversations those tough conversations because uh, two years ago she wouldn't have came to me and had this conversation my right. friend because for her it was hard it's hard conversation when you're talking about money particularly because right. everybody wants to get paid but they don't want to tell you how much they want to get paid yeah. so. We had that hard conversation, and it turned out to be one of the best things that we could have did because she felt great about it. I felt great about it because coming into the rehearsal, I was like, I'm going to talk to her. She had the same thing on her mind coming into the rehearsal, and then when she was like, hey, I want to talk to you, I said, I want to talk to you too. And it was just like, okay, great. We're on right. the same page finally because two years ago, nah, it wasn't happening. I yeah. would try to talk to y'all, and then it'd be like, you wouldn't have tried to. We, it was just like just been uncomfortable. Uncomfortable seeing tension, high. elephant yeah. in the room, you know. But now it's like, hey, I want to talk to you. And she's like, I, you know, and it's great. because, And we see that growth, that growth because we're trying to have these uncomfortable conversations. So me and her both came to the conclusion that this season is the season of sitting in the uncomfort. And it's okay. Like, like let's just be uncomfortable for a while. I got to tell you something. You know, like, yeah. it just is what it is. But, um, yeah. I'm I'm growing. I'm learning that from even now, doing this. Your friend, yeah, who you talk to mm -hmm. is your friend. Yeah. The other dancer is an associate. To be quite honest, I met them both as an artist. Mm -hmm. I just met the first one who I talked to first. I met her maybe three months prior to meeting the second one. And there's the the, the the second one is the younger of the, the age gap. So there's an age. Mm -hmm. So the, the one is the front because you have more in common, more related. So yeah, like with the older the, one, the rapport is different. Yes, than the younger one. So yeah. it's like where it's a friend, but mm -hmm. not as close because there's not a lot. Like you don't relate on a lot of things. Right. The concerns and where you are in mm -hmm. life aren't the same. Right, so right, right. I'm not pulling up to the club that you're at. Right. <laughs> it's right. Like, so yeah. it's those type of things. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like 19 versus my 30, you know? Right. Like, yeah, and so, like. and here's the thing with that. <laughs> yeah. And so, and the reason why I, I, I mentioned that is because it's the fact that the, the relationship isn't that strong. So it's difficult to have an honest conversation mm -hmm. when the relationship is so tenuous. Like, you don't know whether this might be the thing where I might not get to, mm -hmm. you understand? Yeah. And so, like, maybe, like, being able to bring it up to your friend who's the dancer, like the other dancer, mm -hmm. who's, they have more in common from dancing and rehearsing and doing yeah. that stuff. So there's that common ground, mm -hmm. more mutual, mm -hmm. like, in the Venn diagram, they overlap yeah. more than you then overlap. We, yep. And so being able to be comfortable having that uncomfortable conversation with her, her to get her feedback and see where she's at on it versus coming to you and it not being as close and there's not as much overlap and like it might be create the complete disconnect. Yeah. Because yeah. ultimately like the like and this is my personal opinion. If she didn't want to dance, then she just wouldn't have showed. I'm like, all right, I can't do that. Right. 
Which, right. not, but it's it's the understand like I that, that's not what she wants. But then there's also what people are telling me, right? And so it's like that's what like when people be like. I need such and such for a beat, or I need this for a mix, or I need this for a, a cover or a video and all this stuff, and just with a chest, and I'm like, <laughs> who is this show for? Right. <laughs> <laughs> because you know you would take yeah. less than that, but this right. is you posturing. Right. And so, so. And, and we had that conversation too. That's <laughs> me and my friend. We had that conversation. She said she would do it. She just, you know, yeah. she, that posture. She's yeah. holding that to that because of the way everybody else is telling her, you know, that she should and needs to be that, taken. That's this inner, I hate the internet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So, like, she told me, she said, maybe you should open the door for that conversation with her. Yeah. And that's and that's what I plan on doing because I do still, she wants to dance. I mean, that's her passion, you know. Yeah. So, it's not like she won't do it. It's She's like how just, many opportunities do you have? I don't know. Yeah. Like, like if you're an artist, you got plenty of opportunities to go be do an open mic showcase mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, I don't know how many opportunities there are for a dancer to go and dance it ain't and be that like, many. Yeah. and get paid at yeah. that because I make it a point to make sure I pay them every single time they come out yeah. with me. There's not a time that they come out and they are like, you know, don't yeah. get anything. And so that's partially why I'm broke. But yeah. it's okay. I have yeah. to, Like, they, you know, they breaking you. They, <laughs> what? I was like, I'm I'm scaling my shows down to two a month and that's it. Yeah. For the next, yeah. Man, you're doing a lot of shows. Two? Yeah. A month? Yes. Two a month? Yes. Yeah, I hear like Beyonce in Dubai, like, <laughs> <laughs> Look. Like I know your budget. I think that's too many shows. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you, you no, it's it's, okay. it's your addiction. That's the thing that you love doing. That's the part that makes you feel like an artist. That's when you feel most like an artist. And so you put money in there. Are certain people who just Performing. be in the studio all the time because uh, yeah. they love. And there are people who do shows, perform mm-hmm. all the time. Then there are people who spend money doing videos, like because that's the part make me feel like yeah, we shot seven videos and like. Yeah, why? and why? Yeah, <laughs> and so it's like you you throw a lot of your attention and effort behind the things that you that, enjoy doing, performing. Yeah, because yeah. I've always performed since and, I was a kid, and it so takes away from your. It, it may not be the best use of time, resources. Like yo, I want you to think about mm-hmm. with your budget and being real. The amount of time that goes into a show, logistically promoting it, rehearsing, and whatever it is, mm-hmm. convert those to hours of Grubhub or some, you know, gig economy stuff, and boom. Like, let's say that's $100 a month. That's $1,200 more for your budget. And with a $4,500 budget, then you've just increased your budget by 25%. What else could have happened? Like, and those are the real uncomfortable things. Like, because I don't think about that. Yeah. Because, like, it makes you feel alive. Yeah. (laughs) I'm on stage. And I'm spending my money. (laughs) I feel alive. For those all 10 minutes. Yeah. But it makes you feel alive. It does. It does. But. (sighs) Yeah. Okay, so I think what it is for me right now, why I'm seeing myself this way is because for the last, since October of last year, yeah, I think October was my last show. And then from there up until last week when I had my first show this Mm -hmm. year, I just hadn't been doing anything. So I felt like I'm not doing anything, you know? I'm not on the stage. I'm not being seen. October, your last show was October what? um, October 18th, 2022. Oh, okay. So November 18th, December 18th, Jan. Oh, you hadn't performed in three, three months. months. <laughs> <laughs> three months. <laughs> what am I doing? It's three months. That was the longest and, three and, months. But and here's the thing. Performance, that sounds like addiction. No, it was actually because, September. Okay, September, four months. Yeah, if September. that makes you look, ooh, yeah, because like, I didn't do that. But performances yeah. doesn't <laughs> make you money. Performance yeah. doesn't make you money. I mean, you know, and I just found out that you can get paid if you per register. Show on and you do this. I yeah. mean, I'm with ASCAP. I just never, never, never did that. I just found out about that. But then I also find out you have to report in your taxes, is yeah. actual filing for income because you make that money. And what's and wrong with like, that? Nothing. What is? What is? Well, you said, but I found. I right, listen. I gotta and talk to y'all. I found listen, out. <laughs> you should be lucky to have to pay taxes. 
Like you what? like, listen, that means that means things is going good. Do you Ooh, rather not it. make the money? No, I'd rather make the money. All right. So I just don't want to tell them I make the money. So here's I'm kidding. A, no, no, but no, no. This is this is you being a shitty person. Yeah. Okay. So I I don't want to have to pay no taxes on it. I don't. So so I don't have to pay. Let's say fifteen percent. Let's say twenty percent taxes on this three hundred dollars. Yeah. So let's say that sixty dollars. So I'm gonna give up the two forty because I don't want Uncle Sam to get sixty. I don't. I don't want him getting nothing. Right, so I'm gonna make sure I don't get anything either. Make sure. <laughs> it's, it's like the one person when you put who has it to like sign that. off on the record and fucks it up for everybody Everybody's else. Like, nah, I can't <laughs> get nothing. Y'all ain't getting nothing either. So I mean, the hook, the hardest part. I need seventy eight percent on. <laughs> I need most of that, rock, man. Yeah, it it it. Is that shitty person coming back out? <laughs> It just—it's like, yo, you—you you don't. I have such you, a negative connotation for taxes, right? Though. But you don't so have a negative why. connotation for the interstate. What? Right? How you think that shit get paid for? Okay, like tax when, dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, like all this shit that you. But enjoy. this shit still got potholes. So where Listen, my tax dollars going? Yo, anyway, it's but. better than the dirt road. Go to the country. No, you're right, because I'm <laughs> Jamaica. All right, all right. Let me tell you. Listen. Them roads in Jamaica. So, and so this is the Mm-mm. thing. We, you appreciate and you, like I said, like, it's the same thing with the internet. People don't want the ads, right? Mm-hmm. But then they also don't want to pay for your Gmail. You don't want to pay for YouTube. You don't want to pay for any of this stuff. Free stuff. But this stuff has to function there. Somehow, servers, right. And then you still want a job there, and you want them to sponsor you. Where does this money come from? <laughs> Where's the Where? money coming Where from? Where does the money come from? <laughs> Nobody wants to pay anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's like, that's the problem. It's like the artist who, when you're doing the show, well, I need to perform. Well, I need to, you know, because my people got at least, so I need to perform early. And I need to, when you going to have the flyers done? And, like, can we do sound check? And, like, like yo. Uh, demanding, demanding. Yeah. And not putting anything nothing. on anything. <laughs> got a free show and you asking all these. <laughs> and it's the same. So when we look at from taxes. Yeah. It's like you want to you wanna pay the least amount legally possible. That's it. Like you want, there's tax code, tax law, structure your company like this, do this like this, pay yourself payroll, do this as a draw because this is going to be taxed at this percentage. Mm-hmm. And like you, you want to do that. It's like we like, yo, Cash App about to start reporting. No, no, like, <laughs> right? If you make, like, bro, you, you, you run a business, bucks, don't you? Right? <laughs> When that came about, I was like, everybody was like, oh my God. I was too. I ain't gonna Yo, lie. I was definitely mad. I was like, six hundred dollars and you're gonna start charging me taxes here, here, on my here's money. The thing to think about this. Like, and this is like your tax dollars at work. You're able to make money because you pay taxes. Like people are able to send you money um through Cash App and all of these things, and you're able to order stuff and send it and don't worry about like the people getting robbed and the, the 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 government them losing your shipments for your shirts that you sent out or people's yeah, because of, of a functioning government that allows for all of this transportation of goods and creates an environment that's conducive for trade like the the Congo yeah the Democratic uh, Republic of yeah, the Congo, all these DR, rare earth yeah. minerals, like a lot of places in Africa, all these rare earth minerals and all these things, <sighs> but they don't have anything. the infrastructure yeah. to mine it effectively, to transport it and all that. Because but they have it. They yeah. have it all. But if there's no infrastructure to... To get it, to use it, to the application of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, that's why you got to watch all you these episodes. You got to watch the last episode. You don't even know what that was about because right, right, you just, right. you're like, I ain't going to watch the last right. episode. I'm going to watch this one. Now you don't know uh, what we're talking about. You don't even know what's about. going on. See, See? gone back. <laughs> just gone back. Don't eat, don't go, no for it. Don't go past, don't go past, go, go but, back. But that's where we, we get to, to that point. Yeah. And so it's. Um, Texas. Like, and, and like going back to the shitty people, like wanting to benefit without paying. For the benefits. Mm. Everybody want health insurance. Yeah, Don't yeah. nobody want to pay for health insurance. Oh, no. <laughs> so you think that yeah. a company should just pay for you when you get sick. Canada does it. Yeah, taxes. 
Yeah. Yeah. The same thing that you started right. on. Didn't right. And then I go to Canada. Well, Canada gives you free health care. Yeah. Yeah. Through taxes. Through taxes. Yeah. They should do it for the solution. So, yeah. But you don't want to pay taxes. That's I why don't. they can't do it. I don't. Because y'all running around yeah. here hiding y'all cash. Scamming, boy. Atlanta. Niggas in Atlanta scamming. <laughs> can't even do that. Cause so, <laughs> but, and, but that's like, and so you like, it's just a, it's a fundamental principle that, Everything must be paid for. It's science. It's like, like, yeah, I'm a math guy. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think it's. I don't remember. It's like a lot of thermodynamics. Is like, um, energy cannot. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes, transfers. Mm-hmm. So when I clap, like I used to hear that in energy. school. Yeah. So yeah. I clap, and it converts to sound energy. And heat energy in my hands. Like it was potential energy in my muscles mm-hmm. to make me, but it's just in this system, like if there's money in this system, money moves around. Like, but there's finite money in yeah. the system. And so you can't, and that's where we're, why we went off. I don't wanna get too nerdy, but go off, <laughs> go stand and all this stuff. Like, cause now we can just create money. Print more money, yeah, right? Print more yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> but it devalues the money, money. that's out mm-hmm. there. So it's like all these things. So yeah. if if we're looking at this thing, at, at the music and the music industry and your career, and you want to to pull value out of the system without putting value into the system. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so it's like if you think that, yo, it's like when people say this thing, uh, it takes money to make money. Mm-hmm. If I give you a hundred dollar bills, you give me a hundred ones. I made money. If you give me but one hundred dollar bill, if I gave you a hundred dollar bill and, and you give I me a hundred, just broke it down to yeah, hundred. Yeah, yeah, same thing. You're giving me the same thing. Yeah. So it doesn't take money, money to, to make, make money. No. It takes money to make change. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But if I want to, like, if I give you a hundred dollar bill. And you give me ninety eight dollars in a bottle of water, then I've bought something from mm-hmm. this exchange. So you made two dollars. Right. Like you've made money in the exchange. So it in order to make money, it takes more than money. It takes something else with it. Mm-hmm. So you can invest money into something, but then we talk about those factors. Time, yeah. effort, talent, all of those things that augment the money that you're spending. So you have $100,000 to invest, but you better have some talent. Right. You better take some time. You better put forth some effort. You better make some contacts. Some. It's it's going to be, have to be something that augments that, that money, yeah. that makes it give a return. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you, just, you can't, it doesn't make sense. Nope. And so... For you as a creative, as an artist, wanting you to to be mindful of that, that anything that you're doing, like if you wanna you wanna create value, you have to bring something to the table. Mm. You have to be a factor. So even in that song, if you're not singing it, someone else sings it better. They're a more experienced singer than you. Mm-hmm. That's what they bring to the table. That's how they augment it. And made the record better. Yeah. Your experience and your contribution as a writer is what made their singing better. If that record goes and goes crazy, like think about Whitney Houston's big song, I Will Always Love You. That was Dolly Parton's song. She wrote it. But Whitney's voice made it better. Made it what it was. Was, yeah. <laughs> it made it that whole song. I completely forgot Dolly Parton wrote that song. Yeah. I completely forgot until you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. And so, but that's, that's Whitney's the, song. But that's <laughs> the babe. thing. But yeah. she, that's what she brought this yeah. to the table. She brought her vocals, her vocal cords, her skill as a singer to, and made that more than it was when it was a song that Dolly Parton had wrote. Mm. And so it's like everybody brings something to the table that makes things like you want to be at a table where everybody's bringing something. And you don't want to show up at the table without empty handed. Exactly. Yeah. And so when we when we talk about these little things, like and I'm just joking around about the tax and stuff, but it shows an example of that thing. Like I want to take from the system. I want to sit at the table, but not pay Give for the anything. Seat. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so it's like being mindful, like how that applies just in everyday life and how it goes into the music when you do deals, when you are in this situation with this record. Yeah. When you're in this situation with your dancers. Interactions with yeah. people. Yeah. Like that's relationships. what society is. Yeah. We're all working together to in, just make everything better for everybody. Mm -hmm. So because you have these dancers, they're making your show better, but then you're giving them an opportunity to dance and do what they want, but then also to pay them at mm -hmm. the same time and creating these things. So like I said, she values the opportunity to dance and do the shows because she probably the same way you're doing shows because you love and Perform. it makes you feel good. Like. Mm -hmm. If I'm a dancer, I probably want to dance, and I want to be. I like the crowd. I like the the same thing, yeah. and I don't have direct control over. I can't just book a show for me dancing, right? And and so like, there's a certain value to that, and so just understanding and and being mindful mm -hmm. that you want to be able to bring things to the table and be mindful of the things that you bring to the table, and considering it in these conversations, in these negotiations. Um. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Your homework. Oh, I got it. Okay, where's your homework at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my homework today. So, for those of you who are watching and don't know where the homework is, because I didn't even mention it on the last episode. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, after the last episode, um, because she had set her goals um, to do at least uh, four, no, it was two or f it was two prominent stages um, or four prominent. It was four, four prominent, prominent stages. stages. Two of them were mine, uh -huh. and then and two were s something else. Something else. Uh, generate ten thousand dollars in revenue, cash revenue from and her forty five hundred dollar budget and twenty playlists and get on twenty playlists. Yeah. And I told her like we talked through it and mm -hmm. how everything was feasible based on the budget and what she was trying to do and. Um, and then we had a conversation about the playlist because that seemed like more of a mystifying. Yeah, and how am I, I was get like, don't done? know where to go, who to start with. Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the most because I'd never done that up to this point. I'm never right. even. Tr I mean, I tried one way, but it wasn't a really right. good way. So, yeah. So my homework this week was to put together a list of 12 people or companies that can help you get playlist placements. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a list. I actually got 14. Woo, oh, look at me, you. overachieving and stuff. <laughs> but um, so you gave me the first one, which was playlist. Uh, supply. Supply. Pl playlist supply. Then I found That's this. That's more of a do-it-yourself situation where you get access and you can search through. Did you check them out? Did you go to the site and. No. You just copied off my paper and then I just copied up. off the paper <laughs> and I put it in the list because I looked at these other ones. So I found out that um, these other playlist places you have to actually like pitch for. Mm -hmm. um, didn't know that. Um, mm -hmm. So there's playlist push. Mm -hmm. This one called Pitch Book where you literally you can get with somebody off of Fiverr. Fiverr is also another um, resource where you find somebody and they can come up with a pitch for you and then you go to somewhere like pitch book or playlist push and they pitch it to these playlists for you with some cool you know uh, presentation and deck and hopefully you get on the playlist placement based mm -hmm. on your pitch then there's artist push mm -hmm. um promo sound group that one was kind of questionable for me it looked, sound group. Yeah, it looked like... Mm, I'm familiar with the first two you mentioned. Okay. Or the first three, because I gave you one of them. Promo Sound Group. Yeah. Was this on... Did you find them on Instagram or something? Yes. Okay. Did you did you search on Google as well? I just, did. Okay. I found them on Google, too. and But the website... I put a question mark next to it, because the website was a little iffy for me. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know if this is real, if this is legit. I don't really see any uh, reviews, anything, you know, because I was looking for reviews to see who said what about it. Are real people actually using it? What does the website look for? I didn't see that stuff. So it was kind of ah for me. Then, um, of course, Spotify, you can go directly through mm -hmm. Spotify. I had no idea <laughs> that you More could research. go. Right, right. I was, when I found out, I was like, you mean to tell me. It's, like, it's so <laughs> mystical. I don't know how this. <laughs> Why didn't anybody tell me? 
Um, so the and then there's Distro Kid, which that's the one that I've tried before, but it's like a little lottery situation with Distro Kid. You literally click the spinning wheel and they give you a playlist and they say, Yay, you've made this playlist, and then you're placed on this playlist, but who knows if people are actually listening to this playlist? Because it just the the two that I got in play, placed on, if somebody does their lottery thing and they um jump into your spot on that playlist, then you get kicked off the playlist. So that's how uh, How often do you do the lottery thing? How often can you do it? You can do it every day. Oh. Okay. And that's the problem. Okay. You can do it once every day and if somebody lands on your spot one of them days or even the same day, you get kicked off the playlist. So you can be on the playlist literally for a couple moments. <laughs> you won't you won't even stay too long. It could be. It's a possibility. Yeah. Po- the probability. Probability uh, though. Probably not. Probably. You're probably getting kicked off right away. I think so. <laughs> Cuz like I said, I was on there maybe for three days, and then I got kicked off because somebody took my place. But what is three days? Like depending on how many people listening to that, yeah. Did you look up the playlist? No. Look at you. That's why you got kicked off. <laughs> so, so you don't deserve that the, spot. It was no, like, you don't deserve it. Like Listen, you don't even deserve that <laughs> spot. You got put on a playlist that you didn't even go do your homework on. I didn't. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. So why do you deserve that spot on that playlist? I didn't understand at the time, Kelby. (laughs) Because because I I showed up at the table. I did. (laughs) Look at at least I did the lottery. Some people don't even do the lottery. I did the lottery. Guess what? Someone else. They lucky to have me doing the lottery. Got you up out of there. All right now. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want that truth. (laughs) Maybe maybe had you like, yo, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on your playlist. I like the playlist. I followed it. I followed you on Instagram. I may have stayed on that playlist a little longer, or they probably would have put me on another playlist that wouldn't have gotten bumped. Who like, knows? Here's the thing: is like, and I don't know if these are, these could be algorithmic playlists. These could be this is all could be like bots, not bots in its terms of the listeners, but a managed like, for instance, like I have set up, and I well, I used to have it set up like once I um like flag a song through automations. Um, it'll automatically put it on this playlist, put it on that playlist, and do the same thing over on our sync it up with our other playlists on YouTube mm-hmm. and a- Apple Music and stuff like that. And so, like, there could be a system, an API, where when they do this and you land on that, it's automatically put in at song number 14 or whatever it is, and they keep track of it, they take it out and put it in. Mm. And so, there could be. That could be these could be distro kid playlists. Oh, uh, okay. I see. With yeah. just different genres and different stuff. And this is a service that they done and maybe they promote. Maybe yeah. they do some stuff. Maybe they don't. Because they did ask what genre of music it was mm-hmm. so that they can place it in the right, yeah. And so it's mm-hmm. it's it gave it a try. It gave yeah. it a shot. But if it was like, for instance, something where it was a personal where there were curators that opted in and they're doing something with them, like then if you get placed on somebody's stuff like that, then there's a good chance that if you... Talk to them, yeah, communicate and they, with if them. If they like the record, and mm-hmm. or if the record does well, performs well, like it doesn't have people skipping off of the playlist, mm-hmm. then they might want to keep it on the playlist. Mm-hmm. It's like, at the end of the day, how does it benefit them? Yeah. Like if DistroKid is paying them, hey, we want to get as many people in as we can and whatever. But if they're curating the playlist and their thing is having a dope playlist and they're supplementing some of this and making it make sense through DistroKid or something, then you know they're they're they have to balance that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, but yeah, the um, yeah, one look, looked a little. The I ain't promo say sound group? Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Mm-hmm. It um it doesn't look that sketchy like you said. I mean, for me, I just didn't see any look, reviews. Yeah. I didn't see any reviews, and that's what I was looking for based off of what but we talked about. But it looks like about. it's catering to hobbyists. Mm. Like like I said, like Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I see. Helping DJs and artists grab fame by the Family Jewel since 2010. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, like looking sell. Okay. And so, like this may be uh, a smaller operation. Mm-hmm. Like the yeah. Mm. 
Mm, I don't know about this. Yeah. Like they one hundred thousand SoundCloud. They're selling plays. Like yeah. I stay away from anything that's like. And can't that mess you up? Like if if you are uh, buying views and plays and stuff like that, uh, they can. What? I read something on my track recently, and it said like they can uh, suspend your song or take it down. Yeah. And they feel like you use them bought it. Like if. If we're supposed to be paying you for your plays, yeah. and you're creating fake plays. plays, and now you're getting money for something that's not even And real. here's the crazy thing is mm-hmm. you're not getting more money than you're paying for the plays. So it's really just like... <laughs> you're wasting money. Yeah. To for, for, self for the chance of, yeah. F- fulfillment, gratitude, Because I want to hear what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. <I> got 100000 <laughs> mm-hmm. Crazy. All right. So another one that I found was Groover. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Groover didn't have such great reviews either. I did um, watch, read a uh, write-up on three of them. was Groover, Submit Hub, and Sound Campaign. Mm-hmm. Those three, there was like a comparison article that I read, and of the three, Sound Campaign did the best of the three, um, and the amount of money people was paying for it. It was between 20 and 90 bucks. It wasn't that much, mm-hmm. but it was still like... Really low plays. It was like one fifty max was what I saw mm-hmm. with um, between those three. So those are three more. And then before eight, ever heard of before I eight? Heard that. Okay, well that looked. I heard of the I don't Groover, Groover Sound Sa- Club, Submit Hub, Submit and, Hub. I'm familiar with uh-huh. and, Submit Hub and Sound Campaign. Yeah, I'm familiar with that one too. Mm-hmm. And then there was this app. This is the only app that I found called Soundbirth app. Never heard of that. Yeah, Soundbird. Mm-hmm. That was the only um, playlist placement app that I found. And then a person that I know that has actually personally came to me and said, hey, let me help you do this, get mm-hmm. on some playlists, was James Worthy. Um, James Worthy, he's an artist. And yeah, I know. He, yeah, and his music group, um, Humble Sound Music Group. So mm-hmm. I talked to them a couple months ago, and they were trying to help me get on some playlists. But I never went through with it because what just was wasn't the budget? sure. Um, I think it was like three something. It was three hundred and something a month for six months. I think it was three fifty a month. We was um talking about for six months. Okay, so that's like twenty one hundred. Mhm. And I just was at the time. That would was like, be like fifty uh, percent of your budget. Yeah. And so, even at that time, I was like, "That's a lot of money." Yeah. Because <laughs> you knew yeah. in your heart that you were broke. I knew. <laughs> I knew, <laughs> but but to and you, I and even then I wasn't making real. the money that I'm making now. Then yeah. so I was really like, you asked for how much, you know, like to do what just to get on some playlists and do some other little stuff. I was like, mm. I mean, you know, it sounds good and I would love to, but yeah. can't afford that right now. Now, question did did you did you tell him that? Did you give him a call and say, hey, I appreciate you taking the time out. But I'm not gonna be able to do that because it's not like in my budget. Yeah, yeah, we had that conversation, and he still reaches out to me to today and say, "I'm ready when you are, just you know, waiting on you." And I'm like, "I'm still trying to get funding." Him and uh, there was this one other person, um, Silverback University. Mm. But this was a Silverback University helps entrepreneurs gain funding, business funding, mm. loans, and stuff like that. And at that time, there, it was like a sign up thing was uh fifteen hundred dollars to sign up and I was like, I don't have fifteen hundred dollars right now just to sign up to potentially get money six months down the down What's the road. your credit score? Um six thirty four. Okay. We'll we'll talk on the next episode about yeah. that. Yeah. My that's the lowest one. The other two are a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean the lowest one is the one that matters. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah six thirty four. <laughs> so and I can only say that now because two years ago it was four forty four. Who Jay Z album? Yes, and I had to work. Y'all. That ain't money, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh man! Whoo! Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in in researching those things, do you see where? That goal is significantly more tangible. Yes, having had a chance to look at some different companies, different options, different paths. Yeah, them. I just I just think that with them, with these companies, I just really want to. 
I prefer it to be through somebody I know, like you said, having a relationship and being able to work through that is a little bit more trustworthy than just going through, you know, an app or a, a page or something like that. But now seeing these and being able to read through and compare through them, I do feel a little bit better to say I'm going to at least try it because mm-hmm. I can I can risk twenty dollars, you know, mm-hmm. and see what happens. But here's the thing is what results do you expect from twenty dollars? And like so and that's where you gotta just allocate the budget. Like yeah. now you have a budget, now right. you're allocating money out of the budget for these specific things. Right. So And since my goal is only twenty playlists for the year, mm-hmm. if I can get on two playlists from twenty dollars, I'd be okay. Mm-hmm. You know? And then see how that looks for the next month or or so and what happens with or, that. Or 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 the best way to get on the playlist is to have your best songs. So, like, what records? Like, I, I don't think that you have enough records. Mm-hmm. Like, you haven't got, like, what was the last song you recorded that was yours that you're pushing right now? Zaza. Zaza. I want you to look in the camera. I want you to look in the camera, Zaza, to tell you this. Zaza is the worst record that you've ever recorded for the rest of your life. Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I was like, I thought you were about to say that's the worst record you've ever done. I'm like, why would you say that? But for the rest of my life, okay, that means I get better from here. So that's exactly. cool. That's cool. Because, you know, he, he tried it, but Jeremiah no. already did this to me. So I was so prepared. You have to. You have <laughs> I was to. prepared. Like, so yeah. you still, like, be recording, making, writing, Doing stuff, even referencing, like, and that's one of the things with the music review and why I was like, I don't do ours in a way like, yo, send in the hits because I want you to send in shit that ain't ready. Yeah. Because if I give you a critique on something that ain't ready, we can get it ready. But if I tell you, hey, like, you say, yo, you should rap right there. You should do this. Like, mm-hmm. yo, that thing's up on Spotify. Ain't nothing. Right. To it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> right. That's exactly what it is. We're done. Facts. Fendi facts. <laughs> It's over, y'all. It's up there. Yeah. Ain't so, doing it, but yeah. So, but um, in doing that, yeah, um, changing um, like focusing on getting the records together, doing still always being creating, always being creating, but creating economically. So mm-hmm. always writing, getting working with producers, finding beats, doing stuff. And then, like, even when you just do reference stuff, you you just record something and have in a place like the music review where you can submit something and get feedback from Mm -hmm. not me, but also other people People and creators. And when you see them flame them up, it's like, okay, I need to get that one mixed. Yeah. And then it's like, now you got something that you have a lot of confidence in and you feel like, and then you test it out. Now you take that one and let's see about doing some playlists. playlists. Let me see about performing, see how it reacts in these different spaces. Yeah. And so um, the thing is, like, if Hmm. you can get, if you have a song that gets, let's say, on for every $20 you spend, it gets on one playlist, then it's like, all right, (laughs) that's cool. Yeah. If you spend $200, then it gets on 10 playlists. Yeah. Um, but if you have a another song that for like every fifty dollars you spend, it gets on three playlists because it just has a higher conversion rate. Yeah, and it's like so you spend the same two hundred dollars and you get on twelve playlists. Was it twelve playlists? Yeah, twelve mm-hmm. playlists. So now you got more playlists, less money spending, or with the same money. Yeah, like. But oh, it's like, but it costs less per playlist. Yeah. And so you're able to have more reach, more impact with the same budget. Like, so that's what, for me, my, my thing I've always done with artists and my recommendation is go with the path of least resistance. So find a record that has the least resistance because your resources, your money is finite. Your time is finite. Those are, those are generally your limiting factors is mm-hmm. money, time, help, those things. So if you can get the record, get the best record that you have, it may not even be your favorite record, but it's the record that gets the most immediate response and that people can gravitate toward. Um, like that, for me, is like generally what I tell people to focus on. 
Okay. So, um, but yeah, that's where things are. Um, I feel like this is a cool place to stop. Yeah. Um, we got to get some homework. Yeah. Um, you're going to do a spreadsheet. I've never been so excited about homework. <laughs> I've never been, but. I'm going to send you a template for a spreadsheet for each of those companies. Um, I want you to find out what they charge for. Like, so we'll go off James Worthy. Mm -hmm. His 350. Yeah. So, so we can do apples to apples. Okay. So all of the people that are on there, you're going to see what 350 can get you on that. Like, even if you reach out to them and say, hey, I have 350 a month to spend on promoting my record. I'm working on a record. When I get it done, I want to have, I want to do a six month campaign, 350 a month. What's it? What will this entail? What can I get? How does this work? Okay. And then that way you can compare apples to apples and we can look through it and see. What's the best deal? What makes the, the most best sense? to go. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right. All right. So, it's like every time we do this, you're a little less shitty. <laughs> <laughs> so, one day I can actually say, it's not me. I'm not the shitty artist. No, you're an yeah. artist. You'll always be. <laughs> I always be guy, shitty. It's what? like, yeah, that, that stank don't come off. <laughs> Like I'm a, listen, I was an artist, so I am like, yo, I know, and I, I, I because of that, I have to put a concerted effort to not being that. What I have to, I have to. So wait, you think you're a shitty person? I think I, I think yeah. Okay, most you people, say most yeah. people are shitty people, but, you but it's like, time. but it's to well, when you know that, then you can counter it. The shittiest people are the ones who don't know it. Mm, yeah. Like I when I when, once I learned I was an asshole. Like once I learned that the way that I was talking can come off differently to other people than the way that I felt intended and intended. It. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, then I have to be mindful of yeah. how I, and so because I know it, then it makes me less of it yeah. because I'm mindful on how I talk and interact with people because um, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. But then there are times when I'm like, yo, but what I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it as abrasive as I could, but I'm still going to tell you. Yeah. So... <laughs> You gonna get this truth? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just not gonna say anything. I'm just like, I've 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 resolved to watch people drown. Burn like, everybody yourself. like, hey, hey, all right. Nah. <laughs> Go well, don't let me that. drown. If you see something, say something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, we up out of here. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. Uh, this is Kelby Cannon, publisher of Making a Magazine, and Miss Primrose, artist, resident. You know. And this has been... Artists are shitty people. And, and, but not me, though. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs>